So what we have is a fairly difficult testing problem. And in practice, there are a couple of different ways to do with it. The first way doesn't actually have anything to do with testing, but it's such good advice that I can't resist giving it. And the advice is that you should always try to use low-level programming languages or interfaces that are predictable and that return friendly error codes. And what I mean is basically, given a choice between using the Unix system call interface, which has all of these unfriendly features that we were just talking about, and using the Python libraries, you'd almost always choose the Python libraries because they have far friendlier behavior and they have far fewer obscure error codes. Now, of course, we don't always have the option of doing this. We probably can't implement a full size web browser in Python and expect it to run really quickly and be fully featured. So we're forced to use this, these, these bad style APIs sometimes. Now, from a testing point of view, we can often use a technique called fault injection to deal with these kind of problems. So let's assume for the moment that we're using the Python library to, to create a file. So we're going to be issuing a call like open slash temp slash foo, that's a path to the file we're trying to open, and w specifies they're opening that file with write permissions. So now, if our Python application issues this call, we might have a fairly hard time testing the case where the open call fails because on most machines, there's going to be a directory called slash temp, and so this call might almost always succeed. So what we can do instead is call a different function, my open here in this case, with an which has an identical interface to the, open system, to the open call. And in fact, not only is the interface identical, but its implementation is also almost identical. So most of the time, what my open is going to do is simply call open. So what we have is a stub function that's almost functionally equivalent to open, but the key difference is we wrote the code from my open. And what we can do with this is Conditionally, inside the MyOpen code, we can sometimes cause the open system call to fail. And again, this is called fault injection, and it's a fairly common testing technique. So in practice, you have to be pretty careful with fault injection. So one thing that can happen is, if you make MyOpen fail too often, like for example, it fails 50% of the time, then a program that's using it probably will never get off the ground. A large size program that opens a lot of files will almost never succeed in opening all of them, and so we're not actually going to get to executing the interesting part of the file. So one thing we might do in MyOpen is have it initially succeed, maybe for the first 100 calls, and after that, it might do something like fail 1% of the time. So that's just an example. In practice, we would have to experiment with what kind of failure rates are good at testing the system that we're actually, the software that's actually under test. And so let's just take a quick quiz over this material. So the quiz is, faults injected into some software under test should be, first, all possible faults, second, none, and third, faults that we want our code to be robust with respect to.